of books in the background. This was totally impromptu. We were, he called me up and we were just chatting about stuff and we started talking about so many good things. I said, hey, no, now he's gonna show off his books here. Um, <laughs> uh, David, why don't you tell um, tell my group what um, kind of the you and I differ on nutrition, but um, we kind of see the same on a lot of things. So, yeah. what's your take on it? Well, um, you, you were asking me about. Uh, I'm going to get another chair here. This thing. Uh... Yeah, when I said impromptu, I wasn't kidding. Yeah, so this is uh, this is impromptu. So um, <clears throat> we've practiced this for 37 days. Now, um, so <clears throat> we were talking about uh, fasting, and, and the question is, and it's a, it's a question that actually a lot of people ask me when they're doing uh, high-performance athletics, is how do I, you know, reduce my um, overall body fat? And the, the best way to do it to hurt yourself is to, you know, follow one of these quack, you know, fast on water for 40 days. And so, so don't hurt yourself. Um, the problem with fasting on water is that uh, if you have zero nutrients coming in your body, especially minerals to build electrolytes, your body's going to have to build that from somewhere. And so, you know, it'll start leaching that out of your uh, tissue, organs, brain, and you'll end up, whenever you leach a, a nutrient out of your brain, then your, your brain drops below a certain threshold or an organ then you go into flight or fight you know your your body says ouch that hurts or oh geez i'm approaching death and so now i'm going to go into flight or fight and or fight or flight until you put something in my mouth to fix it so my recommendation is you don't do that um, so now there's a couple of ways that you can do it which will ease your process um, if you have to drop a little bit of body fat really fast, you can do uh, water with uh, high-grade salt. Now, you got to be a little bit careful because, you know, when, when you think about salt, you may think you know what salt is, but if you just walk into a grocery store and get salt, um, that ain't salt. <laughs> and your body will not recognize that as a food that it can uh, stay balanced on because the salt in a grocery store has been cooked at two, three, four thousand degrees and so what happens is all the minerals coagulate together and all the really interesting trace minerals are burnt off. And then they usually add chemicals to bleach it to get a uniform color and then they add anti-caking agents so that it won't glob up and so what you really got is chemical sludge. So that ain't salt. <laughs> So when, when cool sludge on french fries. <laughs> yeah, so when I say salt, uh, even health salt, like if you go and buy um, which was uh, obscene to me when I figured this out, is we used to uh, just uh, resell Himalayan pink salt uh, to our uh, clients. And, you know, we'd been doing that for probably a year or two. And I one day I just happened to send some off to get it assayed. Guess what I found in that pink salt? That, you know, it was like 30, $30 a pound or something ridiculous. That's expensive salt, right? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. So, guess what I found in that salt? You'll what? love this. Nickel. Nickel. <laughs> Do you know how freaking toxic... Yeah, so, everybody goes to get their mercury amalgams out. I mean, right. I spent thousands of dollars getting all the mercury amalgams out of my mouth. So, on the chemical toxicity uh, continuum, there's mercury here, nickels here, Cadmium's here. So cadmium is the stuff that basically gets thrown off the tires when they roll across the hot asphalt on the road. So yeah. if you're if you're ever driving any place in a car, make sure your your air is on recirculate inside, mm -hmm. and never have your windows down. Really? Ever? Wow. I mean that stuff is so it, it goes mercury, nickel, cadmium. So cadmium is the worst. Yeah. Nickel's next. Mercury's next. So I'm I'm looking at this assay and I'm thinking, nickel. What the heck is that? And so then I found out that most of these uh, these uh, salt companies were importing salt from um, around the Tibet area, and it was usually ground in Pakistan on low um, um, hardness uh, nickel grinders. So you know, if you take a, a nickel grinder and put it together like this, mm -hmm. and you put a hard rock salt in there, guess what? The salt right. is harder than the nickel. Yeah. And so you get salt and you get nickel. Yeah. So we had to, I, we stopped carrying it and it took me about two years to find a company 
Uh, here's what I'd do. I'd interview salt brokers and I'd ask them, so um, what kind of grinder is your salt ground on? Mm -hmm. Most of them would just go, eh? What? <laughs> right. Duh. And then I got this one person that said, oh, well, we have a so-and-so manufacturer brand, so-and-so model uh, stainless steel grinder. And I said, how do you know that? And she said, because we couldn't find one in Pakistan, so we bought one and we freaking shipped it over there. <laughs> wow, wow. So that was interesting. So anyway, that's a little aside. So anyway, when, when I say salt, you gotta, you gotta find salt that is fit to consume. And so if you take a little bit of salt, I mean, you just take a pinch of salt and put it in every eight or 10 ounces of water, that's enough minerals to um, uh, keep your alkali, your uh, electrolytes balanced. So now you're suggesting back to uh, um, the reason why we decided to record this is Dave and I were just talking this morning. We were about to talk about something completely unrelated. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned, yeah, you know, it's a, it's that time of the year again. I have to, you know, get in you know, my best shape. Blah blah blah. You know, I just came back from L.A. And I feel like a beach whale, and I'm not really, but you know, we, we're kind of hard on ourselves. But uh, after three months of not being able to train in the gym from a ruptured bicep tendon, and that's oh, now dude. healed, and yeah, yeah, I, I don't even think you knew about that but yeah no. i used prolotherapy to uh to progress the healing of that and it worked like a charm so cool. uh, there's a guy here in austin that does prolo um and i recommend that for anyone that's got a tendon or bicep or a muscle injury um doesn't work for joints but works wonderful for tendons um so now I'm back in the gym full time and I say, okay, well, I have to uh, kind of die a little bit more radical than I do. I follow my own radical fat loss blueprint, which I want to get into in cool. a little bit. Uh, but, but now it's like I have to do something in four weeks. So I said, okay, is there any way to maintain muscle mass and drop uh, body fat a little bit faster than oh, normal? yeah. but normally I wouldn't be in this position? That's why I was saying David's like a, the, the mad scientist, the chemist, the, uh, the uh, <laughs> David would be classified as a pseudo vegan or a vegan all the way, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been vegan since. Since the eighties. Yeah, so he's a, he's a long time vegan and uh um, and so I'm, I'm not, I'm the, exact, I'm the exact opposite, but uh, he knows uh, more about nutrition than just about anybody I know. So, uh, and gets into the fine nuances of it all. We're going to talk about his chocolate bliss product, which I've had. It's really, really, really good stuff, really tasty. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to do a little experiment with uh, with that as well. But we were talking about the first four weeks, and David threw out this really radical thing. So it's more radical than my radical fat loss blueprint. He said, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, the best way to get, you know, get, get lean really fast is just drink salt water. And I was like, it's like, wait, whoa, time out, salt water, I'm going to throw up, you know, I was like, and, and how, your body's going to die, and what's going on here, but then you start throwing out different, like, say, well, you can mix a little bit of algae in there with, um, now, this sounds yeah. gross, guys, but hang with us, it's not as bad as it sounds, so explain so why, why that would work, explain why your muscles wouldn't just wither away and die, Oh yeah. Um, and, and explain why, like, if you, because if you just drink water for a day, you, like you said, you just go spaz in a couple of, yeah. maybe a day or two, max, you know, uh, your brain is starving of glucose, and, and your body's going, feed me, so yeah. how how does the salt trick work, and do you act, does it taste like salt water? Yeah. So, well, there, there's a couple of a couple of ways to use salt water here. So let, let me ask. Uh, so I've got a, a ballpark of what we're working with. What's your current body fat, and what you what are you targeting, John? Oh, my current body fat's about nine percent, and my target's always about four to five. All right. So four percent. So you're and um, what's your total weight? Just ballpark. Uh, two twenty four. Two twenty. Okay. So you got you. See, I'm a little bit different because I only got 50, 150 pounds to work with. So I, you know, my approach would be a little bit different than yours. Um, so, so here's the here's the a couple of ways that you can use salt. Um, if you take salt, if you take water and mix it, um, and here's the ratio. If you take uh, one quart of warm water and mix two teaspoons of salt in it, that is uh, about the same salinity as seawater. So I'm, I'm going to talk about two ways to use salt here. The first way is this: uh, you can do a salt flush, and what that does is it, the, the salinity of seawater is just above the the uh, saline level where your kidneys say, "Whoa, dude, that is too salty. I can't do nothing with it." So I ain't going to do nothing with it. I'm going to pass it through from one end to the other. So one trick you can use to uh, completely clear out your intestinal tract if you require to do that really fast, I mean, you can go get a colonic and spend 75 bucks and have somebody put a pipe up your butt. If, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, yeah, I, per yeah. I personally dislike that intensely. I've done a lot mm -hmm. of colonics. I don't like them. Yeah. 
uh, and for 25 cents you can sit at home and drink a quart of warm water now I gotta tell you the first time you do this don't do this and go like operate heavy equipment don't even actually go out of your house unless you got a pair of depends on <laughs> because no, I'm not, I ain't, this is not it. Not even a joke here. Is it? If yeah. you, you know, you know those times where you feel a little bit of gas coming out, and you like, you know, hike one cheek and let it out. Yeah. If you do that after you've had a salt uh, flush like this, chances are you're going to end up in, um, you know, a, a compromising situation. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. rule of thumb is uh, at least the first few times you do these salt flushes, if you're doing that, uh, make sure you stay at home, because it will typically. Um, uh, one of two things will happen if your if your if your body has an appropriate level of salt in it already, it'll pass it through end to end. Now, if you drink a quart of water with two teaspoons of salt and you don't have that come out your you know rear end in a matter of ten to fifteen minutes, what that tells you is that you are extremely salt deficient. Way, in fact, the first time this happened with somebody, I'm like, well, how is that possible? How can you drink? two teaspoons of salt and have it just disappear. So that's it, you know, if your body soaks that stuff up, then rule of thumb is, uh, you know, skip a day and just drink water the next day. Don't do a salt flush like every day until it comes out because you'll really strain your, your internal organs. Yeah, yeah. So the goal here is, you know, you do a technology to create a, an outcome and you do it in a way so you don't completely destroy your health. Well, that that would be that would be helpful not to destroy your health. Yeah. And so we, by the way, we're talking about very healthy things. We're not talking about destroying health or radical st stuff that's going to land somebody in the hospital. But right. There's always there's a right way and a wrong way to do right. anything. Like for example, uh, you, you can take for chicken or, or or you can take tofu and you can you can manage to screw that up and make yourself sick. So yeah. uh, the, So you can salt and water are both very healthy, extremely uh, necessary for the human oh, body. Oh yeah. So we're talking about things that are uh, just kind of a trick to this was the cleansing trick so that you basically wipe everything out of your intestinal yeah. tract that, that shouldn't be there and that's going to make you burn fat faster right off the bat oh yeah that's, yeah one of the main reasons people can't burn fat is their intestinal tract is all clogged up yeah in fact if you, the likelihood of you being able to to you know take off fat in a in a fairly short space of time if your intestinal tract is backed up good freaking luck yeah yeah. Um, so the so the first, here's the way I would do it, John. If I was in your situation and I was like looking to drop my body fat really fast, what I would do is I do a, a salt flush, like I talked about. That's the first thing. Uh, if my body soaked that it soaked that salt up and it didn't come out my rear end in you know an hour or less, mm -hmm. then I would you know wait a day and I'd keep doing that every other day until I got a flush. Right. And so that, what's the mixture of that again in case someone Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, one quart of warm water. Uh, you don't want it hot, no, don't want it cold. It, you know, right in the mid range of uh, warm uh, with two teaspoons of salt. Two. And can we? Can you give us a brand of salt that would pass the litmus test of? Uh, well, you know, I used to be really diplomatic and say, "Well, you should go out in the marketplace and do your research." Ah, screw it. Uh, just buy our salt. It's twelve bucks a pound. It's uh, Sunfire salt. It took. You know, it's the it's the product we sell that has the least amount of profit. It's the biggest hassle, and it took the longest amount of time to create. It took nine years to put that salt in that bag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and just buy it. Yeah, and so guys, I don't make any money from this. Just so you know, uh, we're you know, if you buy it, there's going to be a link underneath the video if you want it. I'm going to buy it. So um, this is all new information to me. <laughs> my, I've heard of doing this kind of stuff in radical fast and th things of like that nature, but I've never heard someone get so specific about the type of salt before. But oh, yeah. um, David is a man of, of nuance, as we say. So uh, he's got uh, <laughs> he's got this stuff down. And uh, so okay, so now uh, once once it's all out of your butt in yep. the toilet, you're you're all clean and fresh on the inside yep. um, then what then okay what's... so the first thing is you're gonna do this every other day you, you may just do it once I mean you right. I mean looking at your skin you look to me to have a fairly high level of mineralization yeah okay so more than likely you're gonna get a flush first off the bat so right. once you're done with that so that's the I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a flow chart this is pretty cool I've this is the first time I've actually walked through this whole process and recorded yeah. it 
See, uh, when, when I said, you know, that's so funny. Is a lot of guys, a lot of marketers say, I'm in an impromptu session with so and so, and I'm like, I, we really are in an, uh, you know, an impromptu session where I literally had to say, hold it, let me figure out how to do this, and and yeah. you know, I can't do two cameras, so I'm sorry, I couldn't pull that off. This is that impromptu. Normally I could, uh, but uh, and I said, you dude, we've got to release this to my to my list because they they would love them. the yeah. radical ones would really love this, and oh, I want to yeah. make sure that we we put all the 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 caveat in tour, so to say stuff in here like you got to be careful with this stuff you got to do it to, you gotta just follow what he's saying and my recommendations are always to say ask your doctor about it but nine times out of ten your doctor's clueless and doesn't know what the hell he or she is talking about when it comes down to nutrition so that is the, oh yeah that's the rough thing about saying check with your doctor so I usually say make sure you have a really really smart good doctor that knows nutrition then check with him or her and about this but uh anyway um so after the uh, you're flow charting this out now yep. after the uh after the salt water um, um, butt flush, I guess you could say. There you go. Uh, by the way, this is a rated PG interview, I think. So uh, yeah, so we'll we'll try to keep our we'll try to keep our language better than what we use with each other. <laughs> that's a good deal. That's a good deal. Okay, so after that, um, yeah. All right. Okay, so now your your pipes and tubes are clean. Mm -hmm. So then, probably what is going to happen is your your body is going to be extremely uh, permeable and requiring some serious nutrition. Now here's a little um, tip about why people, one of the primary reasons people just, it's impossible for them to lose weight. Because they are literally starving to death. The U.S., uh, the CDC here, and we're, we're in the United States making this recording, so our Center for Disease Control tells us that 8 out of every 10 Americans is malnourished and dehydrated. Now that is sobering. That's that's staggering. I didn't know it was eight out of ten. That's just, that's just scary. Eight out of ten. Is your is your um, uh, audio connection doing funky stuff? Uh, mine isn't. Okay, it's just on my end. That's that's fine. As long as we got a clean recording, cool. Uh, anyway, so uh, that means if you got ten people stand up in the room and you're one of them, eight of you is malnourished and dehydrated. Now the reason that this happens is that we're living in the midst of a lot of confusion. Like if you walk in a grocery store. Um, you might be confused and think there's food in there. You might walk in, we won't mention any upscale grocery stores here in Austin, Texas, down near Lamar and uh, uh, Fifth Street. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But if you walk in a store like that, you might think that all those boxes, battle, bottles, and bags of stuff are food. They aren't. Uh, the only food you'll find is around the perimeter in the, the produce. Here's the rule of thumb. You know it's food if you pick it up and there's no nutritional panel on it. If you pick up a tomato or a uh, you know uh, avocado or a durian or a coconut, there's no nutritional label. If you, ha if you have a nutritional label, really what that tells you is the toxicity in that substance that you're going to detox if you got to put that in your mouth. Yeah. Not good. So anyway. Um, that's the, the the challenge is we're surrounded with all this stuff and we we eat it thinking we're going to get some kind of nourishment from it and then uh, we're constantly starved so we constantly have to eat overeat calories just to get a minuscule amount of nutrition so this kind of goes along with losing weight and also um, you know losing um, uh, fat in your situation I mean you aren't overweight right but you're no. Uh, you, you're looking to lose body fat. So the rule of thumb is uh, is you, you boost your nutrient density and drop your caloric density. And so, you know, if you're, we, there, there are two primary stages of life. There's the maturation stage, which we're, where we're putting on massive muscle and tissue and bone mass. And then there's the maintenance stage, which you and I are in, John, because we're over 18 or 20. And so we require very, very little uh, nutrition to maintain what we're, our um, uh, body mass is. Mm -hmm. Way less than we think. And the, the problem is, is that most people are eating uh, foods that have so little nutrition that you know, they have all sorts of challenges if they uh, reduce their food intake even by a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you know, my body weight's 150 pounds. I eat maybe 1,500 calories a day, maybe. 
And I've been doing that for six years and my weight's rock solid. In fact, when I started, the only way I could gain weight, I was 128 for years, the only way I could gain weight is to uh, go on to a, a nutrient dense, low calorie type of eating style. Really? Yeah. So now, now, just so people know what we're talking about here, uh, on 1,500 calories a day, which is very low um, uh, for the average guy that's 150 pounds. Oh, um, yeah. It's very low. But, David, how do you feel? Do you ever feel hungry? No. In fact, that's um, wh what I tell people is you know, the, um, you know the, the level of your nourishment or you know how well you're nourished by the number of hours you forget to eat. Yeah. Simple equation. So, so here's it. If you wake up you know, in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning and the first thought in your head while you're, you know, rolling out of bed to have your feet hit the ground is, ah, oh, I got to eat something. Dude, you are starving freaking to death. Mm. So my first thought about food is usually like I usually wake up at four or five in the morning and I usually drink water for the first three or four hours. And then, so like today it's uh, almost noon and I've been, I woke up this morning at four. So what is that, four, eight hours. And the only thing I've had besides water is this little glass of chocolate bliss, which we'll talk about in a minute. So that's, in, to me, the, the moment that David told me that, I thought, it, that's insane. You're going to go into uh, you know, cannibalism for sure of the tissue, et cetera. Um, but I, I've known David for quite a while now, and um, that's not happening. He's not withering away and dying. Um, he's made, he wants to be 150 pounds, so if yeah. he wants to be 180, he'd increase it and stay yeah. there. So, And he's ne I've never seen him low in energy. I've never seen him hungry. So yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, and I'm, and by the way, uh, if, uh, David, if you don't mind me asking, uh, tell everybody how old you are. Oh, uh, let's see. I've been around the sun, um, what year is this? 10? Uh, 50 times. Okay, so you're 50 years old. Yep. And ever had any plastic surgery? No, no, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now it's really funny. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. I gotta, I gotta turn that up. I, lo I lost the monitor there. So that's, this is gonna be hilarious when I record. <laughs> I'm gonna have it transcribed because they're going, man, this is the rawest video I've ever seen. But um, cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if if David was to uh, to dye his hair dark black or whatever the natural color is, you'd probably think he was 35 or 40. But uh, so he so he's very much into anti-aging. I can say that, but not from an anti-aging point of view like he, no. that's not his goal his, it just happens to be a nice side effect yeah, it's a it's uh, a side effect yeah yeah it's a side effect so um but now okay we, we we're drifting around the subject here a lot and i apologize again this is impromptu but i want to get to the information yep. okay so um if someone didn't have anything but but salt water and basic nutrition that they could get at a grocery store we'll, we'll get back to chocolate bliss here in a second which is a really really tasty stuff um so what would they do Okay, if, so we're going to go the grocery store route? Who? No, no. Like, what, what are you suggesting that yeah, we're going back to the water fast? Oh, okay. Throughout the idea of doing either e either some form of amino acids along with. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. Amino acids, yeah. Well, uh, and you said well. Well, yeah. So, so no. here's the here's the here's the process. So the first thing I would do is I do the salt flush, mm -hmm. and then the next step that I would do uh, because your 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 body's going to be entering into a different mode at that point. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do something at that point to, um, I mean, it's really, uh, I mean, trying to explain all this, um, uh, you know, the last 30 or 40 years, you know my story, right, John? You know what uh, Yeah, hold on one second. Let's go back to, I'm going to have to edit something out of this here. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to when you said, uh, just, I'm, I'm going to ask that question again because something popped on the screen. Um, sure. So, so let's just start there. Um, and also, I, let's give someone, let's give them the most succinct answer that we can. Yep. Uh, uh, just, okay, where do you go after the, the salt cleanse? Um, yeah, well. So, and then we can go into the story and then, we'll, okay. Uh, but this is the only stage part of this. But uh, okay, so I'm going to ask the question again. Uh, okay, David, getting back on track here, uh, we kind of got off on a, on a tangent. Plus, something popped in front of my screen. Um, anyway, so after the salt flush, uh, if somebody just wants to, if we're looking at dropping body fat over the next four weeks. This is yep. something you would only do for four weeks. Okay, yep. what are you suggesting that I do? For example, just take me as a as a, okay. as a get thing. All right. Well, you've got access to me, so here's what I would do. Uh, salt flush is number one. Number two is the salt flush puts you in one mode. The second thing you're going to move to another mode and that's going to be to make up a, a gallon of chocolate bliss and 
for the duration of that gallon, it might take you half a day or one day to drink it all, but the only thing you're going to drink is that gallon of chocolate bliss and an equal amount of water and uh, in between glasses and with glasses you're going to eat some high octane enzymes. Okay. So no, that might take you it. half a day, it might take a day. It might okay. take two days. High octane enzymes, uh, a lot of people are not going to know what that okay. means. Okay. So, so uh, enzymes, I would just suggest, you know, just um, rather than trying to, I'm kind of like you, John, is, you know, you could spend your freaking life researching this stuff. Just get some of our enzymes and use them. And if you'd like to do research afterwards, use ours as a baseline. If you get better effect from something else, great. If not, keep using ours. Okay. And every time you say that, I'm just going to say, I'm not doing this interview to make money. I'm doing this <laughs> yeah. as an impromptu. I don't make a dime off this. Um, and I'm sure I could as an affiliate. Maybe one day I will, but um, right now I don't. So um, that's the way it is. So this is just information given to you guys raw. So, and, uh, you know, I feel kind of funny talking about it, too. I mean, I used to, like I say, be really diplomatic and say, try everything out. And usually it's a waste of time. You can spend years and thousands of dollars and come out with zip. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just going to tell you, there's a reason why I went to all the trouble to do, you know, develop all these products and they work. And so I'm just going to, you know, share what I would do. So that's the second step is uh, make a gallon of chocolate bliss, only drink, uh, you know, here's the, here's the exact way that I would do this is I drink an eight ounce glass of water mm -hmm. with an enzyme, just one enzyme capsule. And then 15 minutes later, eight ounces of chocolate bliss with an enzyme, 15 minutes later, uh, eight ounces of water with an enzyme. Okay. And then, you know, keep drinking water. And then if you get uh, hungry again, then you have another glass of chocolate bliss and another enzyme and start the whole process over till it's gone. Okay. So you're talking no solid food. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, but now people are going to go, oh, a liquid diet. Okay. So what makes this com different than a typical ah. liquid diet? Well, the, there are a whole bunch of, of, uh, very unique substances in this um, product, Chocolate Bliss. Uh, the first is chocolate, because chocolate is the richest source of magnesium on the planet. And so what happens if you dump really rich magnesium, first off, to, for your, your body to use a mineral, it's got to be in what's called an amino acid chelate. It's got to be a mineral and amino acids. If you eat like a... Um, you know, if you go get some skanky mineral supplement, uh, skanky, that's a technical term, um, <laughs> you know, you get like, you know, 10,000 milligrams of magnesium and you eat that. Well, guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to register that as toxic sludge and it's going to go, holy mackerel, what is this nonsense? Yeah. Just to get this out of my body, I got to have all the amino acids that go with it just to move this, this junk. Yeah. So it'll go and it'll stress your kidney, put your kidneys in, um, or your liver in emergency mode and say, oh my God, I got this magnesium here. I got to do something with it. Otherwise, it's going to just, you know, end up laying around and doing all sorts of damage. So then you stress your liver out to come up with all the amino acids. Then you got to go through all the metabolism to fuse together the amino acids and minerals. It's just a huge energy suck. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to lose weight, you don't want to be stressing your organs out doing junk that you shouldn't do. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So uh, the magnesium in the form of, of uh, cacao or raw chocolate, which is also the other thing, is if you eat burnt things, if you eat burned chocolate or high heat processed chocolate that's got a bunch of solvents and milk and sugar, that ain't what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about cold processed. It's never been heated. It's never been alkalized. For God's sake, don't eat alkalized chocolate. It's never been uh, solventized or chemicalized or in any way denatured. Mm -hmm. So that's the first substance that's going to give you a lot of pull. There's a bunch of other things, but I'll just I'll I'll focus on one more that's going to be really important is when you're moving from mode to mode. Every time you change modes, it's a it's a stressor on your body. Mm -hmm. And when your body is stressed, um, the likelihood of you going into fight or flight to turn off that stress is very high. Mm -hmm. That's why people have to exert all this so-called willpower to make changes and why I, I you know, I, my rule of thumb is freaking if it takes willpower, I ain't going to do it. Yeah, it yeah, takes way too much energy. And yeah. so Chocolate Bliss is specifically designed to where it does all sorts of interesting things. And I won't go into why it does it, but I'll just tell you what it does and you'll get the idea. Is the first off, it's built as a dilator which starts in the intestinal tract and dilates or opens up all the fluid passages. 
all the way from the intestinal tract through all the lymphatic uh, blood systems, organ systems, all the way to the microfine capillaries in the, in the brain. So that's the first thing. So now you got all this fluid flow going all over your body, which is way cool, because that means any little nutrient you put in your body, guess what? It gets delivered. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can eat all the best stuff ever, but if it don't get to your cells, it's not what you eat, it's what you eat and assimilate. That's what exactly. you are. I, right? I always say it's not what you eat, it's what you digest so, or assimilate. So yeah, assimilate. So yeah, you got to eat it, you got to digest it, you got to assimilate it. And if any of those breaks down, and you're just wasting your money. Yeah. So that's the first thing is you got dilation. The sex thing, next thing is you got uh, uh, alkalization so that there are a lot of substances in Chocolate Bliss that chelate to toxins so that you detox without ever feeling it. Right. That's another pre reason people don't like messing with weight loss because if they, if they start breaking down their fat cells, the way our body partitions toxins is that it wraps them in fat cells. And so if we start breaking those down, we go into fight or flight, our bodies go, holy moly, what are you doing to me? I'm dying. I got medicals and chemicals. Give me something to eat so I can turn this off. I'm in pain. Help me. And so the next thing is alkalization. The third thing and the final thing is that there are chemicals built into this in the form of camu camu and rhodiola and uh, different berries that uh, tend to cause a natural SSRI type of um, effect. So everybody knows what SSRIs are, Paxil, Prozac, Zoloft, that causes mm -hmm. a, it interrupts the cycle of uh, breaking down serotonin mm -hmm. and reuptaking SSR, so reuptake inhibitor. And so uh, these substances, what they do is they, they, they cause a buildup of uh, serotonin, which means we're, in America, we're dramatically tryptophan deficient. Totally. And yeah. so what happens is if, if we are trying to lose body fat, one of the biggest problems we're going to come up to after we make it past the hurdle of dealing with uh, detoxifying, which we don't have to if we use chocolate bliss because it nullifies that. The next really, really intense hurdle is as soon as tryptophan levels start dropping even a little bit, that means everything in that cycle, serotonin, dopamine, all the feel-good chemicals, uh, start uh, uh, their precursor equations start breaking down. Mm -hmm. So we feel like crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, that's the reason. So fat loss, you, the first thing is mineral depletion. So if you, you, know, if you eat, drink water only, you got no minerals, then you feel fight or flight. The next big one is detoxification. So the toxins start coming out, you go into fight or flight. Oh, stop that. The next one is tryptophan deficiency. Oh, I feel like, I, you know, I'm depressed. I feel suicidal. I feel psychotic. Oh right. my God, make it stop now or I'm going to either kill myself or somebody else. Yeah, and then you grape sugar too. I mean, because yep. that's one of the yeah, natural mm -hmm. reactions to, to suppress serotonin uptake. So. Yep, and uh, so um, uh, the what chocolate bliss does is it is it uh, defers the reuptake of um, of serotonin so what that does is it it basically tells your body oh well I don't have to have a bunch of tryptophan right now I don't have to eat like you know edamame or turkey or avocados I mean all those are dense heavy foods mm -hmm. right so uh, that's gonna uh, add to your um, keeping your body balanced out during the process. So that's number two. So the first is salt flush, the next is do a gallon of chocolate bliss. Now the third thing is once you get on the other side of that gallon, I guarantee your brain and your body is going to be working in a different mode mm -hmm. because you won't have any of the sugar or tryptophan or detoxification or mineral cravings that cause you to just put anything in your mouth to shut it off. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, then you can start doing interesting things. You can, you know, if you start feeling a little bit of depressed, depression, you can eat a handful of edamame beans. Just get a bag of edamame and, you know, just thaw them out and eat a handful. Mm. Usually just a handful is all that's required to flip off that depression because it's pure tryptophan. Wow. Don't eat cashews. So cashews are um, almost as high a tryptophan as edamame. And if you eat cashews, cashews, most people have serious allergic reactions, sinus clogging, and uh, yeah. all sorts of other allergic reactions. So, you know, the raw food, um, you know, arena, most people eat cashews. I wouldn't eat that. I mean, I rarely eat cashews. 
Yeah, too bad because I love them, but uh, yeah, most yeah. people are allergic to them. Yeah, I've been doing you know raw fooding since '89, and your mom's been doing it since '78, and cashews are just big time bad for most people that we've seen over that uh, you know that nearly 50 year combined span. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you know what you're going to do is you're going to do micro eating. So if you feel some sort of uh, craving. You either decode it yourself or call somebody like me that can help you so you don't get off track. You stay on your track. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, a little bit of anamami will um, knock out any kind of depression usually. More chocolate bliss. I mean, that's my primary food. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that we talked about, which is the, the really what number three is about, is um, using a really high grade of blue-green algae which is, for, for those of you technical and uh, that are listening to this, that's pond scum. <laughs> if, you, if you go to your local pond that's overgrown with green junk or your pool, yeah. um, it, it's in the same family, but this is a little bit different. Um, and the way you can tell really good blue-green algae is you put it in the palm of your hand, hold it up to the sunlight, and it should lo look like uh, iridescent blue-green rainbows coming off it. If it looks like uh, you know washed out dingy green pea soup slime that you got is uh, uh, in the cafeteria in grade school, that ain't what I'm talking about. Mm. And you can open up capsules too. I mean, I personally I don't take any capsules of anything. Uh, oh, and I, I, actually I'll I'll make a, a note about that. We'll uh, wrap up on that. Say about 30 or 60 seconds about that. So um, blue green algae. The the benefit and um, the real win of blue-green algae is that it's a, it's a specific type of uh, amino acid and essential fatty acid complex which is extremely efficient. So blue-green algae is 65 percent protein by weight mm -hmm. which is extremely high plus it's almost 90 percent assimilable. Mm -hmm. So you know like you know if you take a slab of uh, mystery cadaver um, that would be like you know um, uh, meat so mystery cadaver has got high protein. Uh, if you um, you know eat that muscle meat, um, you know if you eat it raw, it's something like I don't know, maybe twenty or thirty percent assimilable. If you burn it, if you cook it, it goes down to five. Now, if you got to eat uh, animal products, I mean the way that I it used to, this used to drive my mother crazy. But the only thing I would eat when I was a kid would I would crack the bones open and eat the marrow. Oh goodness, really? It drove her crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and, I it, yeah. and I would take the the um, uh, the fat. I would cut the fat off meat and eat that. Uh, and I would eat organs like uh, tongue, eyes, brain, uh, heart, mm -hmm. uh, liver. But I, I it was tough to get me to eat uh, muscle meat, which is the so same. You're just saying all this stuff to get people to stop eating animal products, dude. I mean, cause it's like you're making me want to stop. Oh like, well, I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it just depends. It just depends on your desired outcome. I mean, it's nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah, you know, people say, well, it's wrong to eat meat, and no. Now, it might be wrong for you if your desired outcome is something that's incompatible with eating meat. Yeah. That's the big thing is you got to figure out what your outcome is. Yeah. So, but the, the, the big win with the algae is that it will um, keep your brain on track, which is the fourth hurdle. So after you go through the minerals, detox, uh, tryptophan, then what's going to happen is uh, your body is going to start um, looking for nutrients in your brain tissue because the brain is the great vault of nutrients. Mm -hmm. And if your body is trying to leach uh, different materials out of your brain and also your organs, that's going to be really tough. That's, uh, that's going to be uh, a fight or flight uh, type of impetus that's going to be very hard to address with willpower. If you use blue green algae in water, it, it won't, you know, it, it ain't gonna taste good, I'll tell you that right now. Um, and what it will do is it'll balance out, it'll keep your organs fit and also keep your brain fit. It'll keep your amino acid balance on track, which will also tend to keep your sugar metabolism on track and all your neurotransmitter metabolism on track. And so that's kind of the, you know, after freaking an hour here talking, those are the three steps. Salt flush and then a gallon of chocolate and then drink chocolate, you know, on and off as you desire. And then uh, do the, the uh, algae and water. 
Well, so let's say somebody didn't want to do the algae and water and they wanted to use, like I think you do at, at times, you use chocolate bliss um, multiple times during the day and then you have a solid meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's so the that's the other approach now. I think most people are going to go, okay, I can deal with that before I can deal with eating pond scum. Yeah. And, and I'm in the same boat. So, so I, I'd have two more questions where we call this off. Sure. Uh, mainly because I'm hungry. It must be I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, question number one is um, I want to get back down to how do you prevent uh, the muscle loss with the, okay. uh, the the woefully low protein, no matter how you slice it, as far as the bodybuilder is concerned? And number two, um, if somebody wanted to, uh, certainly didn't want to be a vegan or, or even uh, maybe even a vegetarian, how would they, if a person wanted to go ahead and eat some meat or eat some fish or eat some eggs or whatever, how would they combine these strategies to make it healthier for them to do that um, and still get a, a, a lower caloric intake? Because uh, I can tell you right now that, that what they David's saying at the at the core of what he's saying is the biggest truism that there is in nutrition, and that is it's not the quantity of food you eat; it's the quantity of food is the quantity of nutrients you assimilate. Right. So you can eat a ridiculously low amount of calories. A, you will live longer. That, that's been proven, and I can't count how many stuff. Oh yeah, that's a that's a known fact now. That's so. a known fact. So so B, and uh, you will live longer without without disease, and C, because a lot of diseases are fed by a high. Again, the more calories you eat, the the uh, the more that a lot of diseases have their have their way with your system, and C, obviously you stay lean. Uh, so because you, you're just not packing on the calories, but the question is, how do you stay satiated? How do you stay yep. full? And so if somebody wanted to use, say, chocolate bliss or something like that, and uh, actually there's really nothing like that, so they wanted to use chocolate bliss, and say I wanted to enjoy one meal a day yep. uh, or two meals a day or whatever, uh, how would that work? And what about the protein deficiency for muscle? Let's cover those two things. Cool. Call, uh, all right. So um, uh, the way that I eat, which you kind of alluded to, which I've been doing now since I, I finally figured it out, March of 2004. So we're past March. So this is over six years. So I'd say at least for me, it's working. Yeah. Um, and Yamaya does about the same thing. And most of the people that I know anyway that are in just rock solid uh, health that uh, seem to be growing younger every day do mm. about the same thing. And that's um, they do some sort of intense nutrient dense uh, liquid eating for most of the day and then one solid meal. Mm -hmm. There's several approaches. I mean, you can take the green smoothie approach. I, if I had to do that, I'd freaking just shoot myself in the head. Yeah, I would. Too. I That's hate that. not going to work. <laughs> no, it ain't going to work for me. <laughs> yeah. um, the other approach, which I like, but it takes time, is uh, fresh uh, vegetable juice, not fruit juice, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Don't use one of these quack like master cleanser things or um, uh, you know drink you know drinking orange juice all day. You will end up in a world of hurt. Your enamel of your teeth will rot. Your gums will rot. Your organs will break down. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, vegetable juice, and when I say vegetable juice, that means broad spectrum uh, greens, tomatoes, bell peppers, uh, fennel. Uh, whatever you can find that looks good in the grocery store, who cares what it is? If it looks good to you, get it, put it in a juicer, and you'll like it. Uh, also mix a little bit of something hot in like garlic or uh, hot peppers to uh, warm the juice up internally. Um, so that's the, the second way. That takes a lot of time though, right? Because you got to get all the produce, you got to juice it, you got to clean the juicer. The way I do it is a little bit different. Um, I typically eat one meal a day, usually around two or three, and that usually revolves around a small amount of avocado, mm -hmm. which is usually like, I mean, I used to eat three or four avocados a day. Now I'm lucky if I can eat a half of one. Really? Yeah. So it, it's a half avocado. It's um, what are called activated nuts, which means that you soak nuts for a while and you dehydrate them. So it takes the moisture out. So now you've got a living uh uh, product that you're eating instead of a dried nut. Uh, if that's a little bit more complicated than uh, what you you know have in your arsenal of technologies, I'd say just skip nuts altogether. Because nuts, if you're trying to if you're trying to lose weight, the only way you're going to be able to do that is on activated nuts. You can't eat dried nuts or seeds and, and lose weight. It just won't work, just and that, won't work. That, that, that that's a that's definitely challenging to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. but let's say so, uh, again, let's say somebody did not want to go a raw food route, and but so you're oh uh, yeah. So so the other thing that I eat so the activated nuts, avocados, and then uh, uh, some kind of greens, um, and then also uh, what I do, it's really easy. 
uh, get a bag of edamame beans and a bag of mixed, mixed vegetables, rip them open and throw them in a big plastic bag, shake them up, and I just dump those out into a pan and warm them up. Mm -hmm. And I mix, uh, mix those with um, uh, another really cool product that's Fiesta Mole that's like a tomato, uh, hemp seed, golden flax mm -hmm. combination. And that's the way I eat almost every day. Now, if you don't want to go that way, what you can do is um, figure out the type of food you like the most. It might be Italian, it might be Mexican, it might be Moroccan, I don't know, it might be Asian. Whatever, whatever the food is, um, find some way to eat that food that is just healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that, what that means is that you, you aren't going to be, buy, be able to buy anything in a bottle, bag, or box. Uh, from a grocery store, or you usually eat out, unless you go someplace here in Austin like Beets, um, uh, and get anything that's dense nutrition uh, without a bunch of other preservatives or other nasty stuff. Uh, so, you know, the so I want to make this even more challenging, David. Okay. I, I, what I'm talking to, because my whole thing, and this is the way I am, you said, you know, if it requires willpower, forget it. If you said, you know, if you're like the same way with greens, if it, you know, requires, you know, uh, the green, the sludge juice, forget it. Well, I'm the same way, and I think a lot of people listening to this are the same way, which is, look, I'm not going to do the raw food thing. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy my fish, my eggs, oh, okay. my, my chicken, whatever. And so I would be willing to wager that if somebody has, had a um, a lean, healthy protein with uh, plenty of uh, good omega-3 fatty acids, uh, greens. Uh, the, the 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 way that I eat normally, um, as that one meal, they would be, uh, in my opinion, equally satiated, um, and certainly uh, they would have that enjoyment of having that one meal, and yeah. they could still enjoy yeah. their favorite foods, like I talk about, because I don't want people to do that. But here's what uh, to, to get away from that. But here's what's interesting is from being around you and other people that that eat this way, you tend to crave what used to be your favorite foods a lot less often so oh yeah you, if you do have pizza it's kind of a rarity if it's it's and it's not because you crave it it's because it's probably the only thing around or you just want to do something different oh, yeah. you know well it's like yeah. when i came over to you when i came over to you guys house the other day and at that party that was in the middle of the night first off it was way too late to eat which is right. another thing make sure your last meal you eat when the sun is high yeah uh, because if you eat, your, you know, if your body starts moving into regeneration mode, which is what happens at night, and you eat and interrupt that, the likelihood of you losing weight fast, good freaking luck. Yeah, yeah, it's an old old trick that yep. uh, is, it lasts me by 6 o'clock, um, and it works, but it's very difficult to do unless you're very, very well nourished because you'll get very, very hungry. And that's well, and you can, you can cheat. You can do, you know, water with a pinch of salt. Uh, or mm -hmm. you can do water with a little bit of algae or chocolate bliss later in the night, and that'll digest really fast. Yeah. So yeah. you'll temporarily interrupt and then get reset back into regeneration. Yeah. Uh, so, so to eat the animal protein that you're talking about, John, the, the big trick... That, so, uh, okay, so here's the big trick about losing weight eating animal protein. Is there's really only one way to do that, and this is a, uh, this is a really big challenge people get into and why they can't seem to to lose weight with animal protein, or it's easier in a vegan form, is if you eat animal protein, there are three general classes of foods. There are foods that take um, uh, uh, enzymes to digest proteins and enzymes to digest carbohydrates are the two big categories. Mm -hmm. If you eat a carbohydrate and a uh, animal product together, for example, if you eat a uh, lean piece of fish or a steak with a green salad mm -hmm. no no dressing on it with any kind of you know carbs or sugar or anything anything like that mm -hmm. the time to digest that uh, to, to drop through your stomach the first time and drop through the intestine the, the uh, lower intestine uh, the first drop is around maybe two to three hours second drop through the ileocecal is maybe four to six hours Mm -hmm. So you've made it into the large colon in maybe six hours. Mm -hmm. Guess what that time turns into if you eat a uh, like a steak, a baked potato, a salad with dressing, oh, yeah. and you get it done in twelve or fourteen hours, if uh, not longer. Well, it, it can it can be as long as thirty to forty hours. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen research saying that. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is if you're eating, and you're eating again before it ever makes it out of your body, if it mm -hmm. you know 
it, it either comes out the other end or it comes out in fat. Your body either gets bigger or it gets out the other end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so if you're, you know, if you're eating, you know, whatever. Is, here's the thing about uh, eating: whatever you feel drawn to eat, that is the right thing for you to eat. Yeah. If anybody tells you different, they're just stupid. Okay. Well, let me say that if you feel drawn to eat Krispy Kreme donuts all day long, you're probably wrong. But uh, <laughs> well, and, and what you ought to do is eat a Krispy Kreme donut, donut, and then do a craving decode. Find somebody that understands craving decoding and figure out. For example, a Krispy Kreme donut. If you were to just eat the the sugar in that, like you had a you know a bowl of white sugar, would you eat that by the spoonful? No. No. If it, if there was no fat in it, would you eat it? Maybe. Maybe uh-huh. not. So you break it down. And you figure out what the primary components are, and then you just up level to eating those healthy. Exactly, and we can do another video another time talking about craving decoding because that that in and of itself would be a wonderful book for people or a wonderful product for people to get to know about. Um, yeah, know that's about a fun that, thing. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. But I mean, the, just the, just the, if you got anything out of this this uh, video here, and I'm still going to quiz him on the, the amino acid profile yeah. here. So hold on one second. Uh, but if you got anything out of this video, uh, then the couple things I would take away is number one, <laughs> the, the salt. <laughs> yeah, the salt is a really huge trick, and that is salt your that friend. Is, yeah, salt is your friend. Uh, the right kind of salt. Again, the link is below. Uh, to um, doing a form of liquid dieting for a while. This is not anything I would do for more than three to four weeks because most people, most people go bonkers on it. Yeah. But again, this is not a fad thing. This is something you want to ease out of, and you want to ease out of it by going possibly to you know uh, three or four of these drinks a day, then a solid meal, then maybe two solid meals and two drinks or, or whatever you want to do. Um, but th- like, this is a way to get your body super hyper nourished. And yep. when you do that. That. I know myself now I do it in a totally different way but I can go I can have two meals a day easily and not be hungry and but I'm eating a lot a lot of dietary fat I'm eating a lot of, of dense food as well so with that said the dense food that I eat are, are usually is usually very very high in proteins a lot of a lot of uh, uh, whey for example a lot of uh, animal proteins that are very that are much higher up on that uh, assimilability chart so cool. uh, a gang wide those kind of things so with that in mind um, how do you, for those of us who lift weights and that want to maintain our muscle mass, how does that happen on a hypo, that means lower calorie diet, and virtually no protein? I say virtually okay. no protein. I mean very low protein. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, so the, the, the question kind of breaks down into your, to keep your muscle mass and your, your well, I will say muscle integrity and organ integrity because they kind of go hand in hand and if you mess up either one you can end up in serious trouble. Mm-hmm. Not good. So to keep your your uh, organ and your muscle integrity uh, there are two primary, well there are three primary, eh, four primary things you need is you've got to have amino acids, mm-hmm. you got to have minerals with the amino acids, mm-hmm. uh, you got to have uh, enzymes Mm-hmm. Because my preference is to offload digesting to uh, supplement enzymes, one of the few supplement substances I take, and let my pancreas and spleen then use their enzymatic potential towards longevity. Interesting. You don't have great. to do that, right? I think it's a great idea. That's a great idea. But if you if you're looking to, I mean, here's the here's the longevity secret is if you'd like to have longevity sort of the easy way, you know, brain dead, I don't have to do anything, think about it, you take high octane digestive enzymes so that all the digesting happens from the supplement and your spleen and pancreas, then all that's about is getting rid of mutagenic tissue, building longevity substances, making your life smooth and easy until you breathe your last. <laughs> that's a great tip. Um, a great and tip. and then the and then the other thing is water. And you know that's I mean we could probably freaking talk for hours. I'll just say this about water: is the biggest win for water, especially if you're looking for weight loss and for um, uh, health in general, is you got to have water that has a very high negative ORP. And what that means is you is you've got a continuum. Water runs either plus ORP, which is uh, rusting, oxidizing, or Mm -hmm. negative ORP, which is reversing oxidation and Mm -hmm. preserving. So everything runs on that continuum. And so uh, that's beyond the scope of today. I'm I'm just saying that, you know, when I started drinking high negative ORP water, uh, my health definitely took a, a next step up. 
So where would someone get that water in case that they're not familiar with it? Uh, well, the only way I know to produce it is you've got to buy a machine that produces negative RP. And um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather not get into all that nonsense right now. Um, not nonsense, but I mean, it's a long conversation. And um, okay. uh, that would be better to, you know, f figure out how to share that with people because they're there's probably a hundred to two hundred different uh, negative ORP producing machines in, in the marketplace, and there's so much myth and bizarre claims being made that um, you know it, it's just something that you got to know about. Okay. Um, and right, so, well. so the, we'll just say water. Now, the cheap way that you can improve your water quality is you start with good water um, and add some salt to it or add okay. some lemon juice or a squeeze of orange juice or something to add some kind of structure and um, a negative ORP uh, component to your water. Okay, I was about to say, we can do this, we can do this through some manipulation of, of, of uh, the, the mineral structure of the water. So let's, yep. let's look at it from that way. For example, let's say that um, uh, we had boxed water, which I like because there's no plastic around it. Um, so water in a cool. box in, in, in LA and uh, really like that. But out here in Austin, um, let's just name a brand of water that most people could find that's pretty decent that we could make uh, using some salt and using a little bit of a pinch of juice uh, to make it more negative ORP. Okay. Uh, well. I mean, you can get bottled water, and all of them suck. At least I've I've yet to test one that works really well. And just on the scale, um, tap water uh, in the Austin, San Antonio area runs between 600 to 700 positive ORP. Nasty. Uh, all the stuff that you pay, like um, you know, a buck and a half for a half liter bottle, you know, a 500 milliliter, 16 ounce bottle. Um, that runs about um, three to four hundred plus ORP. Not good. Uh, the lowest plus ORP water I found uh, is uh, Culligan uh, filtration systems, which we happen to have. Um, I, I tested that. So you know that's that's one option. You just call up Culligan and say, "Come here and put one of these darn things under my sink." Mm -hmm, right. And right. then add some water to it. Uh, if I was going to go that way, though, I'd, uh, we ought to do another um, uh, conversation about negative ORP water. Yeah. Um, because if I was going to drop 1200 bucks to do that, I would do it a different way. And that may sound like a, a lot, but the $4,000 machine I've got, the 15-year cost on it is less than a penny per gallon. If you start figuring out the amount of... Um, uh, you pay per gallon of water over a lifetime buying bottled water and the effect on our environment. It is insane. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And and so don't worry, there's not a link down there to buy some 15, 20 no, 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 no. machine. So, so, but here's the, here's, don't freak out here because, okay, I'm, I'm just going to say this. It's not going to kill you to, to do without this no. for, for hmm. the next month or two. So, uh, but we're just going to get, so buy, uh, buy the best bottled water you can. Yeah, so I think they, do, they do make bottled water. So, yeah, um, so you can, I mean, some, some fairly decent brands are Penta Water, uh, even Aquafina is okay, yeah, um, and yeah. it's it's considerably cheaper than Penta Water. And if you test them on an ORP scale, they're within a couple of points of each other. So if it was me, I'd just buy Aquafina. Yeah, and Aquafina actually tastes pretty good. It so. tastes good too, and that's yeah, the yeah. that's the rule of thumb. You know, it's a good water when it freaking tastes like water, which means it doesn't taste like anything. Exactly. Yeah, and I have a there's an oxygenated water that I drink because it just tastes good. I don't I don't cool. buy the, the clams that it makes, and it's a but the guy ships it to me and it's wonderful. So that's a, that's an option, and I just love it because it tastes good. But so you take that water, you add just a pinch of the salt that we're talking yep. about. Mm -hmm. The salt is below, and you add just a little bit of either you could even stick berries in there in the water. Yeah. So to thing. well yeah. to keep to keep your amino acids and and minerals balanced. Yeah. What you're looking for is a really dense uh, substance like. You know, eat a handful of blueberries. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know, take some say, take some uh, blueberries and just uh, put a little bit of water in it, blend it up. That tastes just yeah. outrageously good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a little um, a little touch of blue green algae, even a minuscule amount, is really high amino acid. So that the I mean, you can take isolate synthetic um, amino acids, but the, the problem with that is when you take one amino acid, like if you take um, uh, tyrosine for example right then what happens if you take a, a gram of tyrosine 
then what that means is now you've got a gram of tyrosine that's out of balance with every other amino acid you just ate, and now your poor liver is going to have to come up with a ratio to balance that out. So every time you take an isolate synthetic amino acid, it's not you know, negative in the sense of being some kind of toxin or poison. It's just that your body's got to balance that out with a whole array of other amino acids for that to be useful. Mm -hmm. So it's way better, at least for me. I mean, my whole goal is to do the least amount I can to put the least stress on my body. Right. I mean, I'm, sure. I'm, 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 if you think you're, you've met anybody that's lazy, they got nothing on me. <laughs> I mean, I am just the obscenely lazy. And so what I like to do is do things like, you know, eat enzymes, which has all these huge ramifications, many, many different uh, ramifications or uh, implications that they're just free. They're side effects. I put something in my mouth and I get all these wild benefits. And it's simple to do. I can do that because uh, i got a busy life. Um, I would tend towards something like uh, berries or... Uh, chocolate bliss which takes a really good or something that's got um, you know a really dense uh, profile of the uh, mixture of amino acids and minerals in a natural food and how does that keep your amino acid profile from dipping to the point where you're losing muscle mass on this kind of thing well I mean you can you can test I mean you can buy a little uh, cheapo uh, muscle mass meter which is what you and I use uh, it, it won't give you an accurate reading, but what it'll do is it'll give you a relative reading that says whether your muscle mass and bone density and hydration is going up or down. Yeah, and, and that's all you need to know. Something like a Tanita scale. Or yeah, Tanita like is, the, is what we use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th those things are worthless unless you do them in the morning uh, yeah. when you're not hydrated, and mm -hmm. you do them as a, like you said, a comparison model. That it may tell you that you're 30 percent body fat when you're ripped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend of mine. In fact, he's. Uh, he's hanging out over here right now. He he, he was he tested the the handheld Tanita scales. He was like two weeks away from a national bodybuilding show, so he was like sliced. He's just completely ripped. And they showed him at like eleven percent body fat. Oh, yeah, and he, but... at this this runner guy came over and he tested it four. And so the guy he ended up lifting his shirt. He goes, "You tell me which one's leaner." He's got like abs on top of his abs, and it's like yeah, totally cool. ripped, you know. So so that's not gonna show do it, but it will show you relatively speaking. So if even if he yeah. tested eleven, which is not true, if he goes down to ten, but you could test your muscle mass that way. And I will. Yep. put myself as a guinea pig I'm gonna I'm, I feel like Tim Ferriss who you know Tim's <laughs> new book is coming out and he basically was a guinea pig for all these wild experiments I can't go into any more detail than that oh, but, cool. uh, but Tim and I did a brief interview together uh, it may be on this page it may be on another page uh, uh, his book is due out so it's a little hush hush right now but uh, as soon as it's out I get some some copy of the book that was never published so I can give to my list uh, cool. because uh, he's a good friend so uh, and he's a good guy but so this is I'm gonna get I'm gonna do this with David I'm gonna do a little guinea, a guinea pig experiment over the next awesome. 30 days and I will report exactly what happens to me uh, I'm gonna have it measured with a hydrostatic weighing cool and I'm not a vegan I don't anticipate myself ever becoming one but then again never say never um, and it's gonna be interesting to do without uh, solid food for 30 days so uh, oh, you're going to go hardcore on me, huh? Cool. Well, you know, you were talking about doing that, right? For the, was Hardcore. It four, four weeks, right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, and water? yeah I suspect that you will, um, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll reach your, your uh, goal much, much faster than four weeks if you're doing just straight uh, liquid. Okay, well, we'll see. And uh, if I don't drop muscle mass, then I will say I will I will start including this as the first four weeks of every program I have. It's like okay, if you want to drop body fat really quick and you want to, and the and the, the key thing here, and we need to do a separate interview for this because this has just gotten really really long, is how do you get off of this? How so? The worst thing you can do is to break a fast. Oh yeah without breaking the fast. I mean, like just dive off the fast and jump into eating whatever again. So you have to know what's going on. And this is a form of fasting, I would say. It's not really because you're getting such high nutrient value, yeah. but it is a form of fasting because you're cl you're cleansing your system. So uh, David, uh, we need to hook up so we can get oh, yeah. the uh, cool. uh, get the uh, one, two, threes for this, and I will report it along in the interim just to say thank you. Oh, you're underneath, underneath this uh, video, you're gonna see a couple of links 
to David's site. Uh, obviously, you can tell by talking to him that he's a very brilliant guy. And uh, and don't be afraid if you if you don't want to go vegan, <laughs> if you don't want to go vegetarian, even uh, the stuff that he's got is really awesome. And you may find yourself um, uh, the chocolate bliss alone. I know a lot of guys that take it that are not vegan, they're oh, yeah. not vegetarian, and they like their calories go down simply because one glass of that stuff is like 140 cal. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, 110 it's, calories. Yeah, it's way low. That's just I, I mean, I mean, 110 cal. Let me give you an example of what 110 calories is. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's that's less than a can of soda. Uh, that's I'm thinking that's about one quarter of a bagel, depending on the side of the bagel, maybe a half of a bagel. Um, so yeah. you would think that you would be freaking starving eating this <laughs> stuff. But th- what we're the whole thing about today was is that that the l- least uh, less food isn't what makes you hungry. It's no. less nutrition. Yep. yep. So I hope if you get anything out of that, it's this. David's site, his, his products are below, and I definitely recommend the salt because I cannot, I, I could speak hours about water and salt and the, necess- and the, the necessity of both in the body, uh, especially salt. So most people like try to cut their salt out. They think it causes high blood pressure. Uh, we'll chuckle over that later. Yeah, that's a that's a myth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a crock. <laughs> so it's just, it just doesn't work that way. So David, again, hey, thanks for the hour and some odd time. And, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, and um, I will call you back so we can finish our, our, our programming discussion. And everybody go check out the site below. Thanks again, David. You're welcome. You're welcome.